Well, the next hymn is in um, many of our hymn books, but it was actually written by Roman Catholic Cardinal John Henry Newman. Um, it's Lead Kindly Light. And um, I wonder if you, you can tell us um, your take on this hymn. Um, uh, it's uh, got some references that I'm sure res re um, resonate with you uh, in the, um, the landscape that you have known. Um, and it's also about God in, uh, powering us on. So could you just speak a little bit about uh, Lead Kindly Light? Thank you. Yeah, that lesson, as I say, it sort of ties in with what I said about resurrection. I've uh, had 34 Easter's as an ordained person, a priest, and it always brings tears to my eyes um, when Jesus says Mary. I don't hear him saying Mary, him saying your name, and him is calling you, he's calling you. But lead kind of light. Yeah, it's back to childhood again, and moments breaking through. There's always one moment in childhood when a door opens and that's the future in. There's a couple of doors to do with that hymn. Um, first, with Roman Catholicism, I spent a lot of my childhood. My dad was vicar of a very small country parish, miles away from anywhere, with hardly anybody living there. I think there was only a local phone box. That was the sort of the only entertainment in the village apart from the church. And, um, I loved it. I loved it as a desolate spot. It had had its moments in it had had its moment in history, in that in the 1530s, when Henry VIII was in power and boy was he a lad, um, he broke away from Rome and started shutting down and dismantling all the monasteries. And the local squire in our village, a guy called Robert Ask, said, "This isn't on." These monasteries, you know, with the local hospitals, the local schools, they cared for us. We're not having this. And so he led a protest. You know, you're a brave person if you protested against Henry VIII, but he led this protest. And everybody rose up with him. It's sort of, in 1536 it was. And he took the north by storm. York, Doncaster, Pontefract, all the sort of big northern cities as was there. He took, and it really brought Henry to his knees, and sort of Henry negotiated with him and said, well, if you lay down your arms, I can see you've got a point and we'll do something about it. And so Robert Ask did that and then was arrested, condemned for treason and was hung in chains on the York City walls. So he was a martyr. And this local hero loomed in my childhood and I've always thought, goodness, he was right. He was right. And it's nearly 500 years since Henry broke with Rome, 1533 it was. So we're coming up to 2033. I think we've had a long enough, really, a half a millennium of separation. And I think the Pope and the Archbishop of Canterbury ought to say, look, this has been going on for long enough. Whatever it takes, we're going to come together again because Christ prayed that his church should be one. So um, that's my take on Roman Catholicism. I'm obviously an Anglican, Church of England, uh, born and bred, and now Church of Wales. And it's a church I deeply, deeply love. But I also love the Roman Catholic Church. And I think, oh, for goodness sake, let's just get together. So that's one take on it. The other take, uh, again, in this small little village, uh, our little village school, we only had 96 children. And we had an election of a head boy. And I was quite new then, and um, I used to go on the school bus, and I was the monitor on the school bus, the tallest boy on the bus, so I persuaded all the other 28 children on the bus to vote for me, or else. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I had a landslide, and never let me in the election, but I had a landslide and became head boy. But for this guy who came to take an assembly once, who'd been on Ernest Shackleton's mission, uh, an expedition across the South Pole, which was some expedition in the 19, 1914, 1915, wasn't it? And they got stuck on the ice and had to go across 800 miles and then climb mountains. But Shackleton brought all his men back. Um, and it was a sort of, this guy, by the time he came to talk to our school assembly, it was to be in his 80s, and he came with these sort of woolen mittens on and these glass lanterns of these Antarctic landscapes and that caught me really of sort of braving yourself and bracing yourself against the elements and as Ruth said it's caught in this hymn. The hymn doesn't mention God once. 
It's really about a light leading you when you've lost your way, a light leading you home, or more unfair, or crack and torrent, till the night is gone. And I'm not really very adventurous, I'm quite a timid chap, but in my ministry, I've tried to get out and about, and whatever parish I've been in, I've cycled around, and some of them have been quite wild, moorland parishes. I used to take the bike up to the, the top of the moors and blow it and just brave the elements. Now, on Easter Day, we used to have the Easter vigil service, the sunrise service at the top of the moors. And uh, one Easter Day, it was just coming down, belting with snow, and I remember cycling up, it was about a thousand feet up, and I set off at four o'clock in the morning with the classical candle in the rucksack on the back and cycled up and it was deep snow. And I just, I remember it was a hare's tracks and I followed these hare's tracks, something in the back of my mind told me, there's some folklore, that hares always went upwards when, when it was snowy. So I got to the top of this sort of moors eventually and I thought, oh you stupid Dave, there's nobody else who's been anymore. As I turned round, behind me were row upon row of headlights climbing up the moors. We had 40 people turn out at 5.30 for the sunrise service. And the snow was about down to here. They were all coming up in their 4 by 4s not on their bikes. <laughs> but um, that sort of adventure, often you think, well, it's stupid to do. But somehow you met. And going for the sort of wild, mad things, um, suddenly God meets you in that. And was it the sunrise service? S U N S O N. And we saw the sun rise over the North Sea, and the sun rose in our hearts. So that's why I chose that. We stand to sing, lead kindly light.